accountable. Are we accountable for what takes place in our church? Are we accountable for this place in which we worship this afternoon? Are we accountable for each other? Do you know someone is not with us this afternoon? Do you know the reason why or not? Are we accountable for their very lives, their actions? In the scripture this afternoon, as I read from Luke, from Leviticus, the New Test Old Testament, here's a line you may well have heard before. I'm sure you did. Christians are so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. Uh, I don't know who said that first. But obviously that statement was intended to make fun of Christians. Do you believe that? Do you feel that you're made fun of? In a world that's so gone bizarre, I would say. Uh, no time for the church. Are we accountable? We, we really are looking forward to living in heaven. Each one of you, I believe, here this afternoon, you're, you're saved. I understand that you're saved. And you're looking forward to heaven one of those days. And we make, we make no apologies to that this afternoon, but if, if that line is true, Christians are so heavenly minded that uh, they are no perfectly good, um, then we have fallen short. We have fallen short of what the scripture teaches about our living on this earth. Living there is a gift from God. But living here is also a gift from God. Which he does not want us to ignore any longer. Fretter away or take lightly. That comes into focus in a special way as we end one year and enter another year. Is there any better time to ponder on the second Sunday of the new year to ponder Jesus' message in the gospel lesson today in Luke's gospel that we are accountable as managers for God? Let us look at the three R's in this gospel lesson this afternoon. And the first one is our role, R-O-L-E. What exactly is a manager? How do we, how do you get the job? Or what is a manager supposed to do? Well, the dictionary defines a manager as one who directs operations. It is our culture uh, you typically get the job manager by submitting your resume or by being promoted uh, from within the company in which you work. A manager obviously does not own the company or the business, but directs and coordinates the people and things entrusted to his or her care. In this story, Jesus talks about, about a manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food and allow at the proper time, or allowance at the proper time. 
The man who is called the manager is also identified in the next verse as one of the master's servants. The word used in the original language indicates that this guy who really is no different from any other servant, there was nothing about him that earned or deserved this role of a manager. It was a gift. It was a gift. And he obviously did not own the business or the home of the master. But he was supposed to direct and coordinate the people and possessions entrusted to his care. I don't believe anyone here this afternoon would dispute the fact that God owns all things. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it is the Lord's, Psalm 24, 1. God's ownership of all reminds us of two important points. First, we don't deserve to be managers for God. We have not earned that role. It is a gift of God's favor. And secondly, everything we have, our time, our abilities, our income, our investments, all of that is really not ours. It's God's. We look back on the past year. We see changes. You've seen it. There's changes coming. And we see failing. Those are ours. We see accomplishments, hopefully, in 2023. Those came from talents on a loan from God. We see weaknesses. Those are ours. We see strength to overcome that came from God. We see a trail of hurt. We did that. We see healing. God did that. We see sin all around us. That is ours. We see forgiveness that comes from God and God alone. So if you got a better job last year, or a better income, kept the same job, kept the same pay, bought a house, renovated your house, sold your house, did well in school, did well in your work, did well in what you do, received a paycheck, you brought groceries, you thank God, and He has graciously placed us in the role of a manager, given us the gifts and the skills to be managers, and given us relationships and things to manage. And there is no option as though you or I could say, No thanks, Lord. I don't want to be a manager for you. But, but don't think of our role as managers for God as a burden. It's an honor bestowed upon us by the chairman of the board of our universe. He's the chairman. He could have left us scratching helplessly 
to pick the locks on the chains that bound us to Satan. He could lift us alone to defend for ourselves. He could have left us scrambling to dig our nails into the grease walls of the devil's pit. Trying to get out an almene. Almene in today's society, even where you live, they're trying to escape, to get out. People have invaded people's lives. They have stolen. They have taken things away that was not their own. He could have left us all. But he, he freed us. He, he freed us. He, he, he wiped us clean and dressed us in fine robes of Jesus. Picture perfect life. And that would have been enough to elect our cheers and our Galatians. People who take from us. People who have stolen from us. They will not get away with our God sees everything. There will be a day when they will regret what they have done. Do you believe that in the church today? But he has also elevated us to the status of being managers while we live in this whole world. He could get things done on earth by snapping his fingers or by using angels from heaven above. But he has chosen to use us on the earth. And just a few of us in number in this part of God's vineyard this afternoon. Just a few of us working together side by side. And as we leave one year and enter another year, this story from the Lord Jesus reminds us that whether we have a little or a lot, we are all managers for God. We are all managers for God. Number two, our responsibilities. Our responsibilities, not the role, but our responsibilities. What kind of responsibilities does a manager have? That person is expected to be alert and each day and not ignore the feelings and production of the staff around him. A manager is expected to know the business, set a tone for hard work and dedication, and in general carry out his or her duties faithfully. The manager in this parable had similar responsibilities. The faithful and wise servant is the one whom the master finds doing his duty. And when he returns, the responsibilities of the manager can be summed up in just one word, and it's faithfulness. Look around the church this afternoon. How many of us are faithful? How many of us are not so faithful? <laughs> what excuses will you have as the days unfold? Are you faithful to this church, to the pastor of the church, to the people of the church? God wants us to be faithful managers. But how does that play out this afternoon? The question again. How are you a manager for God? One person takes up the offering. 
another greets at the door. Another stands in the doorway of our food bank. Another couple stands in the sound room. How many on the platform are faithful in coming to church and playing to the glory of God? Do we go on notice? Yet one person is serving as manager for God and faithfully using gifts and skills given by God to the glory of God for the good of God's people. Serving as a manager for God is not limited to church work. No matter how mundane or how impressive in life may be, I need to ask, am I bringing glory to my God? That's a simple yet profound question. Think about it. When we answer that question, oops, I did not bring glory to God with the thought that just passed through my mind or with the word that just slipped off my tongue. And then we are unfaithful managers. And this person in our church, this person outside of our church had a bad day. And you were the one to come upon the conversation. You were the one in the midst of the troubles that you saw. And then your mind begins to wonder what happened. We, we look back to have to admit that has happened way too often. And just as property taxes or any kind of taxes are due at the year's end, so the end of a year causes us to look back. To look back and remember that we are accountable to God. That makes our knees knock together. <laughs> In Jesus' day, unfaithful managers did not get fired, nor did they receive unemployment compensation. Their fate was a little more drastic. Suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming back. And he then begins to beat the men uh, servants and the maid servants, and to eat and drink and to get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and an hour he is not aware of. And he will cut him to pieces as a sign of a place with the unbelievers. And Jesus lowers the boom on unfaithful managers. And that servant who knows his master will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does the things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. Verses 45 to 48. If you have lived in an apartment building with the rent paid for you by your rich aunt or uncle and watch the apartment building burn in a fire you'd be sad at the loss of your belongings inside. But if you personally built a house on your own and curved the stairway spindles and painted every square inch, laid every tile, sanded, 
stain and put three coats of varnish on every cabinet door, window sashes, the lint of the baseboards in your homes, and the quarter rounds, and every piece of crown molding that goes around in the house. Line, line the shelves of the fruit cellar with handmade jellies and hand craft dill pickles and, and then watch the old thing go up in flames. You'd be extra sad. And those who don't know about God's love and and die as unbelievers will be lost in eternal doom. Do you know someone today who's unbelievers, who's in this predicament in their lives? Satan has them bound and they have no escape. Do you know of anyone at this very moment? The church needs to pray. The church needs to move. We cannot stay in our pews any longer. The church needs prayer. People out there is dying to hear your prayer. God's Holy Spirit can move from this place at this very moment and go where your loved one is and make them escape from the chains of darkness. But those who heard the good news about Jesus and you hear the good news about Jesus this afternoon, and still rejected God's will will find the pain of hell all the more horrible. We're getting closer to God's return. And people still don't recognize where the church is. Because they will realize what they have lost. We don't want to be unfaithful managers. What did you do with your calendars that you got last week? Did you use it to pray for someone? To give them probably the calendar. And that's why we rejoice this accountability stuff which we think of at the end of each year, falls in the Christmas season. It's a joyful time to come together. But still there are miserable people all around us. And Jesus has come as a babe in a manger. He has closed the books of last year's account with God by stamping Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb, and He opens the door to the new year. What about your spouses? What about someone you love that needs to darken the church door once again? What about those that have abandoned the church? We all need to ask. Am I bringing glory to God today? What are you afraid of? We all need to ask, are we bringing glory to God? When out of thanks for what Jesus has done for us, the answer to that question is yes. And then we simply being faithful managers for God eternally receive the rewards. You know, the Word of God is powerful. 
That's the best thing that we could come to church to do was to hear the word of God. You will leave here and you will see all things happening on the roadside. People's lives all torn to treads. But thirdly and finally this afternoon the rewards. God also promises an added bonus for faithful managers. In this story told by Jesus, the red margin in your Bibles, have you got them? God also promises a added bonus for faithful managers. What a shock! What a surprise when the master returned and said to the manager, I will put you in charge of all my possessions. Verse 44, and the master really didn't have to do this, but as an added unexpected bonus, the faithful manager was entrusted with more. And we know that heaven is not earned. You will never earn heaven. By sitting in a pew, by doing what you do. When it comes to receiving good things from our God, the word "hearn" is not in our vocabulary. But God does surprise us with added bonuses. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked in verse 48. And go back to Leviticus. We get to enter the new year not only with the guarantee that heaven's doors have been unlocked for us by Jesus, but also with the promises from God. And he is going to give us more opportunities to serve as his managers in 2023. If you have enjoyed offering 7% of your income to God in the past year, don't be surprised if in the new year will plant in your hearts the desire to give your 10%. And how many of our Christians are greedy. Are we reminded again what we must give for the work of the church? If you have managed a home well in the past years, don't be surprised if in the next year your children ask for advice, your grandchildren for advice, your friends ask for advice once they get past 18 or whatever. If you have served in some capacity at the church this past year, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if in the new year you are asked to serve in another capacity. Jesus himself said give and it will be given back to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the message you use it will be measured to you. That re reminds me also not only you. And in closing this afternoon, for Christians like you and me, being accountable to God is not scary because Jesus is never out of the picture. He has embraced mismanagement of our resume on file with God and he promises to empower us towards more faithful management. And because of Jesus, we will be heavenly minded and we will do earthly good in 2023.